Mike Rendell draws on more than five decades of experience as a professional and recreational fisherman, as well as his time as a fishing magazine editor and author. His latest book is a follow-up to his bestseller, How to Catch Fish and Wear, which was released five years ago and sold over 10,000 copies. It is really great to have you on the show. Thank you. Great to be here. And I really mean that because I want to pick your brains because I'm not a fisher person and I want to really become a fisher person, so we need to talk afterwards. Let's do that. Um, <laughs> tell us about you and fishing. Where did your passion for fishing start? I'm very lucky. I probably had the quintessential Kiwi upbringing where parents you know, didn't have a lot of money to start with, worked hard, looked after us kids and made sure we were well educated. Mum used to take us to the wharf at Raglan. That was home territory every school holidays. It was wonderful. After that, their business came right. Um, they could afford to buy a batch at Raglan, um, got a boat, and from there it was just took off. You know, My oh. younger brother and I would camp up the back of the harbour, spearing flounder. Dad dived, learnt to dive when I did. We went, we got sick of eating crayfish. It was wonderful. So oh, that's a, good, was, that's a good position. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're living fan. the dream. Oh, it was. <laughs> it was fantastic. Oh, very, very fortunate to come up in those times, you know. Mm. They worked very hard and we were lucky to take advantage of that. No, and we're really lucky that you're now sharing this with your series of books because everyone wants to know where to catch a fish and how to catch a fish. What's the biggest one you ever caught, Mike? Snapper, 32 pounds, wow. which is not too bad. Um, I've tagged 1,000 pound black marlin. I worked in Cairns for a season, and that's just a stunning thing to do. So, marlin fishing is another passion of mine, but snap around here, you know, it's incredible Jesus. snapper fishing. That's is, that, is, that, is that the snapper? That's a 32 pounder, yeah. Oh, that's Whoa, so you, that almost looks doc doctored because it's just so huge. <laughs> um, this is your first book, wasn't it? How to Catch Fish and Where, and yes. it was a, a real bestseller. I mean, were you surprised at how well it did? Um, I'll say yes. But I'll say no, I worked very hard on that. I, just, I, on the books, I do all the production and all the photography and all the illustrations as well. So I, I knew exactly what I wanted. Background with the magazine gave me a, a background of what people were looking for. So it made it quite easy to write these books. So I'm very, very proud of that first one. Even more proud of this one and equally proud of the boating one that we did a few years ago as well. So yeah. you know, it's, it's a... I love it. But you've gifted it. this to me, which is great. Merry, Merry Christmas. So when I, when I read... Thank you so much. When I read this, I'm going to be able to fish and catch fish because we've never been able to do it, ever. Lots of little basic stuff in there you'll need. I'd probably direct you to the lure section in the new book a little bit because um, you're on a yacht, yep. so not being able to carry bait so easily. Don't want to carry bait. There's it's a, stinky. Oh, lures, there's such a range of things nowadays and understanding them. So this book, I hope, does a really good job of explaining that and showing you the techniques to use. If you don't have a yacht and you are a walker, I was once at the Takapuna walkway trying to fish and this little eight-year-old kid walks past and just laughs at me and says to his mum, oh, these guys have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> was he right or was I right? Maybe, maybe not. You know, tides, <laughs> wind... Sun, moon, who knows, you know, but there's, there's every chance of catching fish there, no question. So you're covering where to catch fish. Is it sad giving away all your top spots? Or have you well, kept a few for yourself? Don't worry, I've reserved a few. Oh, yeah. But um, <laughs> it's, it's a general direction. I mean, it's not rocket science and knowing the movements of fish. You know, this time of year particularly, we've got fish starting to spawn. So places like Raglan, the Bay of Islands, out here in the Gulf, which is such a fantastic fishery, mm. um, you've got the fish coming to spawn. So it's an opportunity to access those bigger fish right now. So it's a good chance to do it. Yeah, but I can be, I can be right beside another the boat and they are hauling up fish and we're not hauling up anything. What's that about? I'm going to show you. <laughs> yeah. You haven't read Mike's book. It's yeah. Lure. yeah. <laughs> wrong lure, wrong colour. Yeah, it's, it's really just a case of um, watching what's going on and, and making sure you keep the lure or bait in the target area with those fish. Okay. Sounders, you know, watching on the sounder and seeing what's going on too. So much technical, 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 technical. Technology. Technology. Yes, yes. Involved. What's the best time of the year to go fishing? Round about now for these bigger fish, but pretty honest, out here in the in the Gulf, and this is my second stint living in Auckland, over the last eight years we've really been getting it sussed out out here. It's brilliant. July is the best month. Okay, I great. I can almost guarantee to catch a big fish in July. It's and you brilliant. quite often see people just sitting off Westhaven there, uh, all in a little in a row there. That's because from now on there's a whole lot of fish that move into the harbour there, and guys will drift through with your soft baits mm. and go through there and catch some really, really good fish. It'll continue probably till early January. Wow, good to mm. know. Mm. Okay, what would be your, your best tips, apart from getting the box, <laughs> what would be your best tips to offer people watching right now that have never given fishing a go? The, probably the place to start is to make sure you understand the basics of tying good knots, um, understand the line, all those things, how they tie, come together, because you can have the most expensive rod, not mm -hmm. essential, and if you've tied a bad knot and you do hook that fish and it's oh, done yeah, dusted. So and it's yeah. gone. Yeah, do the basics first, you know. Okay, yeah, then those basics. Yeah. And what about your top safety tips then? Safety, weather, um, preparation, weather, weather, and life jackets. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. And keep away the hooks from swinging around and hitting people in the That's face. Right. Mind you, yeah. Mm. Yes. Oh, brilliant. 
I've loved this chat. Oh, you've excited me. I'm going to go out fishing soon. You've got no <laughs> idea. You how get, you get that book. I'll have the blue one. Would, would you get invited on the yacht? <laughs> and Maybe. Uh, hopefully, yes. Depends on how well he behaves with the rest <laughs> of the show. If you come with me, Mike, we'll be on the yacht. Don't you worry. <laughs> hey, thanks, Mike. Mike's latest book, How to Catch Fish and Where to, is uh, out right now. The Big Fish Edition. It's available now, so you should go and get it so you can catch some big fish.